Hi guys, so I try to hold off from calling voters thick and stupid. I try to avoid blaming them for the disaster that they have created. But frankly, we're beyond the point of letting voters off the hook here. Hartlepool has consistently voted for the Labour Party since the seat was created in 1974. But due to the austerity imposed by the Tories while they're in power, the area has suffered massive problems. So voters decided this year to support the, the people who made their lives worse with the idea that the people who made their lives worse would make their lives better. On the 6th of May, the Brexit backing constituency switched from Labour to the Tories and put in Jill Mortimer. Now let's hear what Jill promised back in May this year. But before we get to that, you can see here on this graph how the Labour Party held a commanding lead over the Conservatives and everyone else, and that switched recently. So let's hear what Jill promised. It's a truly historic result and a momentous day. Labour have taken people in Hartlepool for granted for too long. Um, I heard this time and time again on the doorstep. People have had enough. And now through this result, the people have spoken and they've made it clear it's time for change. People voted for that positive change, for jobs and investment. And it's exactly what I'm going to deliver. So that's exactly what she's going to deliver, jobs and investment. Well, did she keep her promise? Remember, just in May, she said, I will deliver jobs and investment. I will protect jobs and investment. Well, Liberty Steel is a big employer in Hartlepool. And the steel industry in general is important for Hartlepool. So how did Jill vote when it came to protecting the steel industry? Well, here is Jill's voting record in the House of Commons. If we go down to the 21st of June, it says here, Opposition Day, protecting Britain's steel industry. She voted no. So at what stage do we say the voters are the problem? The people of Hartlepool were suffering Tory cuts, not the Labour Party. The Labour Party was not in power. But they saw hospital closures, they saw closures of um, courts, magistrates, and the voters in Hartlepool decided, yes, we're going to vote for the people who impose these, this austerity on us. With the hope that by putting in a Tory, a Tory would la look after Hartlepool. But you can see here how the Tories did not look after Hartlepool. Jill Mortimer was put in power just to shore up Boris Johnson's majority. She didn't look after the people of Hartlepool. I knew she wouldn't look after the people of Hartlepool because she's a Tory and because she's going to vote with whatever way Boris Johnson decides. She's not going to act independently. She's not going to look after the people of Hartlepool. But I can guarantee that if you were to ask the people who voted for her, they're probably still happy with their vote, even though she voted against their interests. And they voted against their own interests. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. And answer me this question. Are voters thick? Can we call them thick? At what stage can we do that? I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?